Coming to you live from the palatial studios of PBJ Productions. Welcome to Patrick and BJ Talk Real Estate, where we talk about life, the universe, and everything as it relates to real estate. All right, everybody. Hey, it's BJ. And Patrick. And we're back talking about all things real estate. And we thought this would be a great time as we're kind of into the new year now. And we've been through, you know, all these interest rate uh, bumps and everything else that we've seen. And we still hear about everybody talking about inflation and the economy and all these things. So we thought this would be a great time to just take a snapshot and talk about what's going on in our market. Because um, I don't know about you know, the, the global market per se, but we were told it's the bubble is burst or it's bursting or it's, you know, uh, it's the, on fire. It's crashing. Yeah. The market's coming down Some, yeah. and it's all, you know, prices are dropping and everything's going to be a, a mess. And, and it's all because <clears throat> of a, a war that's overseas somewhere. And it's somebody else's fault because of these prices and market and supply chain and so on. Oh, and it's so supply on. chain. I forgot and, about and, supply chain. Right. And chain, then yeah. with through COVID, so forth. And, you know, here's the thing. We don't deny that these are real issues going on. That's not what we're talking about here. But we want to talk about the reality of what we're seeing in the market. Sure, we've seen um, prices come down, but we are seeing the market, I would say for the first time in a long time, it's become what we used to call a normal seasonal market. We slow down at Christmas. We start to pick up again in the in the spring. We slow down a little bit in the summer. We start to pick up in the fall. There's a se- seasonal ebb and flow to the activity, right? For real estate sales, <clears throat> sure, yes. And for the last you know several years, it's just been flat out. Yeah, there has it's just been tidal wave right. the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what we want to talk about. Is uh, you know we're seeing seasonal things in the market, but the market is not. Um, it's not a train wreck, right? It's anything but a train wreck. It might even be po- it might even be positive <clears throat> for sellers. Sure. Still, last now I don't know which episode it's going to be because we spread these out a little bit, right? Yeah. So the last time we sat together, I was going through the last seven days of sales. Yeah. And thirty percent of those achieved. Now I don't. This, this isn't proof of a multiple offer situation, but this is how I can at least look at the sale prices. Uh, and 29.5% were either full price sales or more. Right. There was more than more than half of those were more than the, or exceeding the listing price. Right. That doesn't mean there was other ones that you could get multiple offers and they're both not willing to pay full price. Sure. So you, you still sell the house, mm-hmm. hopefully. Uh, but that doesn't mean there wasn't more than 30%. Right. Sure. Because we're getting reports back from Vancouver. It's getting multiple offers. Yeah. Toronto's getting multiple offers. <clears throat> yeah. And w- we are too, but it's not clear how how, mu- how much of the sales yeah. are end up being yeah. in multiples. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I, I think the thing that you know we want to make sure that we talk about, or I want to make sure I talk about, is the whole thing about... Um, you, you've read it on Google, so you're an expert. That's right. I've seen the headlines. Right. I've seen the headlines last year, June, July, <clears throat> August, right, September, right. They were all saying across the country, different markets, the 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 housing bubble, the housing bubble, like you were saying at the bit at the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. And here here we are, six months later, seven months later, and it's like, oh, it's not that bad actually. Yeah. And you know, let me let me tell you guys and tell you about uh, an article I read on the internet um, about the importance of eating grass. And and you guys might be like, "What are you talking about?" Just you know, follow along; it'll it'll make sense. Um, so <laughs> the, the whole article, you know, was written about the value of eating grass and how grass is good for you. And um, he even quoted different you know reports and studies and so forth. And I have no idea about these studies, but I read, I read through the article. Um, and, um, at the very end of it, it went on with how you could start incorporating grass into your everyday, you know, nutrition plan and so on and so on and so on. And then at the very bottom, he said, if you believed any of this, 
Oh, man. Throw it all out <laughs> because none of this is true. It's all fictional. I've written it on purpose to show you how easy it is the, to get people to believe something that's completely untrue. These facts are not proper facts. I just created them. These studies are just studies I picked from somewhere yeah. that have nothing to do with what we're actually talking They're about. Probably for cats or something. Whatever. But the, <laughs> the point of the exercise is uh, there were people, he, he was making the point that just because you read it on the internet doesn't make it true. And just like it used to be, you know, they used to say, if just because it's in the newspaper doesn't make it true. And, you know, I think it's important for you if you're, you know, you're seeing things, reading articles, that's fine. But just make sure you know your sources of where the information is coming from and, um, you know, and the facts that back up what they're, they're talking about. And I get part of it is an opinion because we have an opinion on certain things. Somebody else might have a different opinion and, and that's okay. Uh, I think we've talked about that before, too, that it's okay to have a different opinion. We don't need to, you know, drop the gloves and, you know, duke it out over it or anything. Well, sometimes it's just um, the lens that you're looking at a certain kind yeah. of data, right? Yeah, like, for sure. And for us, we're interpreting data that comes across our, our eyes, our desk. Um, and, we, and you know what? Uh, t show me somebody who's been correct 100% of the time. <clears throat> Right, people misinterpret data. Sure. data. Sure. So that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. No, no wonder the headlines are sometimes you know it's a bit sensational. Right. And then it's like, wait a minute, they're not considering this <clears throat> aspect of data, but they're reporting one thing. Right. right. And and what happens is you go back in hindsight and say, oh look, it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Right. Why did I have mercury fillings in my teeth as a kid, and then, whatever, however many years later, they said, oh, that's not a good idea. We need to take those out. Right. Back in the day, doctors were endorsing like cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the point of which is just the what what someone thought. Hindsight is, as they say, 2020. That's right. And and I think what we're, you know, what we want to get at is the point that it's, um, it's really not what we were told it was going to be. It's not been disastrous. It's, it's certainly been a little bit more... Uh, measured in in terms of you know property selling and the price that they're selling for and all of these things um, but as we've said you know we've said this repeatedly this is a great time to be uh, buying a home in the greater Victoria area you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pin this on the government I, okay. in a positive way think about like uh, last time the market took a dip 2008 2009 mm -hmm. what came after that well, you can't buy a house with no uh, no minimum down payment after that. We had a stress test came a little bit after that, and, and it increased a couple times, right? So more measures that the, the federal government and the financial institutions came up with to protect Canadians from overextending. Sure. So we don't have the mortgage fiasco that went on in the, in the States. And I haven't seen, especially with news articles happening in the <clears throat> fall, how many people would be hitting their trigger rate for these increased interest rates right? and how that will affect people. Right. Well, we're not seeing a tsunami of foreclosures. I don't think it's right. anything other than what the normal amount might be sure. so far. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think it's important, again, in all of this to be, uh, just be aware of where the information is coming from that you're reading, what are the sources of it, and, um, you know, and, and talking to, professionals if you really want to know something about what's going on in our market in terms of the well, there's property values time to sell things like that um, you know feel free to reach out to us we're happy to help you or if you have you know an agent that you work with reach out to that agent reach out to your professionals and talk to them about what uh, what's going on and and how it fits or how you fit that into what you want to do um, I, I I think we've you know from what we're talking about here it's it's not a disaster. I guess I'll say that again. I know we've said that a lot. It's not a disaster. It's no reason to panic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. You know, we wanted to really take a few minutes and go over that today. But um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. We're happy to help. But uh, otherwise, thank you for watching today. If you haven't, uh, please subscribe to our channel. Take a few minutes and like the video. It helps us to get the word out there. 
and uh, you know we can because we want to grow the channel to um, inform but also to uh, inspire like we're doing our pieces on the different uh, you know people whether it's the we did Corbin and the the um, the uh, Ugly Duckling, and we have another one coming up here that you yeah, just did. Yeah, we have did. another one with uh, Beauty Salon. Her name right. is Sophia Pastro. Okay. She, uh, she has her salon in, uh, in Langford. It's called Buster okay. of Pearl, so that'll be coming out soon. And we have, you know, we're going to have uh, some, some stuff with the supplement place and things like that, too. So there's lots of things we want to do that you'll want to grab a hold of. So please subscribe uh, to the channel. Again, like the video. It helps us. Awesome. Yeah. That wraps that. Yeah, that just about wraps it up. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. All right. See y'all.